Hello everyone and welcome to the Neotech Electronics Series. This episode is about the PN Junction, so let's get started. Alright, so what's going to happen when we bring a P-type material and an N-type material together? And that's what I've drawn here. The P-type material is represented right here, and I put blue holes in there to represent holes, right? And on the other side, we have red E's representing electrons, because remember, an N-type material is going to have an extra electron in their lattice, and a P-type material is going to be missing one, right? So where they come together is called the PN junction, all right? And that's what we have right there. So think about it. When you bring them together, what, what's going to happen now is this electron, let's assume he's sitting right there, is going to say, hey, there's a hole right here. It's going to migrate to the hole, isn't it? Right? And this hole, is, when this happens, obviously, this hole is going to move this way, right? And guess what? The same's going to happen here. For example, this electron might try to move right here. And when that happens, obviously, it's going to leave a hole, so that hole's going to go there, right? So what's going to happen? Eventually, these holes along this interface here that are very close to these electrons are going to be filled with electrons, aren't they? In those spaces where there were electrons previously are going to be filled with holes. So you're going to have a bunch of electrons lining the junction on the P side and you're going to have a number of holes lining the junction on the end side. You see? Now, remember, electrons, like charges, repel, right? So eventually you're going to reach equilibrium. And equilibrium, equilibrium is reached once this potential barrier, this potential that's driven here, you have a plus, you have a hole, and you have a negative here on this side, that's going to get large enough so it's going to repel further electrons from uh, crossing the junction. Remember, like charges repel. Now, what's the value of those, right? That's probably what you're, one of the questions you have. So for silicon, that barrier potential is going to be approximately equal to 0 0.7 volts, all right? For germanium, that's going to approximately be 0 0.3 volts at 25 degrees C or so. 0 0.3 volts, all right? Now, something else you need to understand when you get out the green here, I'm drawing a dotted line around here. This area is also called the depletion region. The reason for that is it's depleted of charge carriers. All right? Remember, here all the electrons already went over here, didn't they? The holes already went over there. There's nothing left. And for any electron to come from the N side and get over to the P side now, it has to overcome this potential barrier, which means it's going to have to get energy from somewhere. So, anytime there is a positive charge and a negative charge, near each other. There is a force acting on the charges described by Coulomb's law. 
in the depletion region, there are many positive charges and many negative charges on the opposite side of the PN junction. The forces between the opposite charges form an electric field. Got it? Now, we can draw an arrow between the positive and negative charges, all right? So, this color. We can do the potential like this. There's your arrow, right? This is going from a positive to a negative, right? Because you're left with a positive side and you have a negative electron on that side, right? So there is your arrow depicting your electric field. So this electric field is a barrier to free electrons in the N region. And energy must be expended to move the electron through the electric field, OK? So that is external energy must be applied to get the electron to, electrons to move across the barrier in the depletion region. So the potential difference of the electric field across the depletion, depletion region is a, the amount of voltage required to move electrons through the electric field. This potential difference is called the barrier potential and is expressed in volts. That's what they are, 0 0.7 and 0 0.3, okay? So that is what a PN junction really is. There's so much more work that has been done on it, but the basics of it is right there. Your electrons in your n-type region have migrated to the p-type region, leaving holes. And so you have a positive side on the on over your holes, right there, right here. You have pl a plus. This leaves a positive potential here. It leaves negative potential here. And guess what? You have a potential barrier there, and you, you have an electric field pointing this way. Okay. All right, everyone. There's going to be one more discussion here talking about uh, the energy diagrams for the for the PN junction, but that's the basis of it. Bas basics of it, right there. See you soon. All right. So what I've drawn here is an energy diagram for the PN junction, and you can see this here is zero zero energy right there right in fact I'm gonna write zero here and up here you have more energy now you have the conduction band right here remember it's the band of energy for the electrons that are free electrons and I wrote the word free electrons right here that's where they're gonna be located and here's your valence band right here and you can see your valence band energy is below your conduction band energy alright now this is the P side. Here's your junction, your PN junction is right here. So right here's your PN junction. It goes all the way up and then you have your N side. Now, I wrote these as C band and V band. This is the conduction band and valence band. Now notice that your conduction band and valence band reach slightly higher energies for the P side than for the N side, right? Remember, the trivalent impurities, which are used in the P side over here, exert lower forces on the orbits for the um, electrons in the conduction band and the valence band. Think about it. That makes sense. You're going to have less positive charge in the nucleus. Less positive charge in the nucleus means there's going to be less attractive force there, right, for the electrons in their orbits. Less attractive force, that means they're going to be at slightly larger orbitals and slightly higher energy, all right? So that's why you have that. The N-type obviously, obviously is pentavalent. It has more charge in the nucleus. It's going to have greater attraction. They're going to have slightly less energy. So now, how does the conduction take place, right? So the valence and conduction band in the N region 
are at lower levels than those in the P region, but they still overlap. Now look, this is what I want you to see, this. See this here? If it, I just taken this at the bottom energy band, band and bringing it across. This area here is all overlap. That's all overlap. And any electron in here, in this area, and the upper portion of the conduction band in the N region, that means it's in this overlap region, can then just simply migrate over to the con lower portion of the conduction band in the P region. Very important, right? There's no energy that has to be exerted to do this. They're at the same energy level. Obviously, once in the conduction band, they're going to lose energy and then drop into the valence band and fill a hole, all right? So at the instant they're brought together, this is what happens, okay? Now, this is going to continue until all the electrons in this area right here in this overlap have moved across the PN junction into the conduction band and fallen. So then what are you going to have? You're basically going to have no electrons in here anymore, are you? Got it? So effectively now this overlap region is gone here's your new conduction band and if you're looking for an electron in the conduction band it's going to be here all right guess what now this electron is now in or and now in for the for this electron to migrate across into the conduction band it's going to require energy right because it has to increase its energy to get across this p-n junction into the conduction band in the p region. Same thing happens here in the valence band, okay? There's nothing there. And now Notice that the overlap in the valence band is also gone, right, as well. Remember, that's because of the PN junction. However, this distance here between the valence band and conduction band, this band gap here, still remains the same, all right? All right, everyone. I hope this has explained the PN junction, and I will see you soon. Thank you.